So a lot of students have questions in regards to the difference between the land ordinance of 1785 and the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. So I'm going to clear that up. Well, one of them was written in 1785 and one was written in 1787. So that's the difference right there. No, I'm just joking. But the biggest thing to understand about the land ordinance of 1785, it basically gave this new nation called the United States of America the ability to expand west. Remember, previously, before the Revolutionary War, the colonists could not move past the Proclamation Line of 1763. They couldn't go west. They couldn't go past the mountains. But now that they've won independence, King George is no longer in control, and they can pretty much do what they want to do, right? Kind of. And so that's where the land ordinance of 1785 comes in. It basically defines the criteria for new states to form and eventually join the union. So the land ordinance is set up a system of surveying and dividing land in new territories called townships. So basically, if you have you know, a certain um, amount of land, which is 36 square miles, the territory will become an actual township. And each township was divided into sections, which could be further divided and sold. The money from the sale of one lot in each township was to pay for a public school for the children of that town. So that's another big thing. You're starting to see education be of importance and spread west as well. So this is where you see publicly funded education really um, be something major too. So here's what that would possibly look like on paper. Then the Northwest Ordinance of 1787 was a little bit different. It set up a government for a large area of land called the Northwest Territory. So it's a different area. Um, they don't necessarily have um, the same amount of people living in this territory. And you see this area really um, to the west of the Ohio River, um, near the Great Lakes area, to the west of the Ohio River and east of the Mississippi River. And under the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, this Northwest Territory, they had some different laws as well. And so they hadn't yet, they had not yet become a state, but if they wanted to become a state, this is what they had to have. 60,000 people, population of 60,000, at least 60,000 people in that state. They had to write a state constitution and they had to petition Congress for admittance into the union. So when we talk about the union at this point, we're talking about the union of the 13 colonies plus other states that are going to be added based on the population, based on them having a constitution and petitioning Congress for admittance. Um, so the Northwest Territory, those states will you will see um, will later become Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin. And another thing about this Northwest Ordinance that's going to be very unique in 1787, you're going to see that this whole area is slavery free. So no slaves are allowed in the Northwest Territory. And if you know anything about the Northwest, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, most people associate it being very cold. Well, yeah, that's true. But people still wanted to move west. They wanted to explore. They wanted to see what they could grow and cultivate in the area. So you're going to see a lot of Southerners try to move that way and try to take their their ideas and their their way of life being slavery, you know, a plantation style lifestyle to the west. And that's going to be a problem. And you'll later see all of that um, kind of boil over as we get closer to the Civil War. Again, the Northwest Ordinance uh, forbid slavery and it outlawed it for the first time in the United States. And so people that moved into the area, they just knew that they couldn't have slaves. But of course, you had some people smuggling slaves, slaves in. Anyway, they didn't care about the laws and that's going to be a problem. So during its years under the Articles of Confederation, the U.S. had many problems. And so this ordinance, as well as um, the land ordinance, are going to be laws that were under the Articles of Confederation. So this is what that looks like. This is the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. You see around the Great Lakes region um, and then those states that I've already listed. Then you see the original 13 colonies there as well. And then this shows you a better depiction of what that looks like. This is United States of America from 1789 to 1790. So I hope that clears it up for you as far as the difference between the land ordinance and the Northwest ordinance. 
So again, remember the land ordinance, it basically was a criteria for states to join the union. And the Northwest Ordinance was a territory that outlawed slavery. And it also um, created the laws as to how many people had to live in that area before it could actually become a state. Thank you and have a good day. Ugh. <clears throat>